Hello enemies and book lovers, my name is Ash and welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my July wrap up and I've read nine books in the month of July. Three of these were manga, so I mean it's not that impressive, but still, I mean that's pretty good for me. I'm going to be removing my stats at the beginning of the video, so I'm going to tell you just basics of what I read in July. For the ratings this month, I only rated five of the books I read because three of them were manga and one of them I didn't really want to read personally or not read I didn't want to rate one of them so I only ended up rating five and I don't rate my manga so yes only five of them were actually rated I had a very mixed bag this month I went from a one star to a five stars so you know what I'm actually pretty happy with this outcome to an extent <laughs> I read one one star book, one three and a half star book, one four star book, one 4.25 star book, and one a five star book. So overall, this is actually a pretty good month and I'm not gonna complain about it because I quite enjoy the books I read in July. I started one series and I finished a trilogy. So I'm okay with my series right now. I wanted this to be a little bit of a quicker video. So let's just jump into the books right away. The first three books I'm going to talk about are manga. Two of the manga that I've constantly been already talking about is Berserk volume seven. And then we also have Promised Everland volume 17. I've been talking about this a lot. So I don't really want to bring up what these books are about because I mean, I constantly mention it. So I'm just gonna say that I did read these books. I am getting close to the end of Promised Everland. I think I have three more volumes. I've been reading it for probably around three years or more. So I'm just really looking forward to actually finishing it. And then for Berserk, I'm still very early on, but I am enjoying it as well. I was spoiled on something pretty big in a YouTube comment section nonetheless. Someone made a joke about the Berserk series that made a huge spoiler. It was a character death. And now I'm very upset about it. Not only the spoiler itself, but also the fact that someone did that in a comment section. Like at least if you're gonna spoil something, even if it's like a 20, 30, 40, 50 year old book, just put a spoiler warning. Like I hate when people are like, this book is like 20 years old. You should know what the book is about already. Some people don't get into books until later on, okay? I just got into Berserk. Stop spoiling for me, people, not you, not you. <laughs> I'm talking to the people that spoil things on purpose, okay? You, I hope you're not one of them. The third book I got to this month was actually a very, very quick and like, thrown at me read one that i didn't really expect to read but i was recommended violet if you're watching this it's you i'm talking about you <laughs> whenever someone calls me out i get so embarrassed or like not embarrassed but like shy so violet from violet pages please please check her out like i'm peer pressuring you to check her out because she's amazing so do it do it she recommended me cat plus gamer or like cat gamer this is a story about a woman who is very independent she works like an office job and she's usually very alone she doesn't want to hang out with her co-workers she just secludes herself and she plays video games understandable she's also 29 years old which is the exact same age as me and then one day when she's at work they uh find like a stray cat and they don't really know what to do with it and they ask hey who wants to who wants to take this cat with them and then she decides you know what i'll take the cat and so she's never had a pet before she's never had a cat before and she takes this cat in and she kind of just like has these little cute moments with her cat while she's playing games and like the cat like turns the power button off which I get that. And I've never had a cat or an animal do that before, but I've had siblings and they love to do that. Turn off power buttons while you're in a game. It's just rude. It's rude, okay? But a cat is a little cuter than a sibling. I found this book to be really, really fun. And the only issue with this series is that I don't think I can get them anywhere. Um, the only way I can get these eventually will be to buy them. And I actually enjoy them enough to actually probably buy them in the future. They're $15 each, which isn't horrible. I might get them like once every month or two once I get enough money to do that. So I'm going to be probably continuing the series because I really did enjoy it. Uh, the character is not only 29, but literally uh, in the panels that she's playing in, she's playing Monster Hunter, which is a game that I was avidly playing when I was reading this book. So she's the same age as me, playing the same game that I've been playing lately. And I just feel like that speaks to me on a lot of levels. So I just have to read more of this because animals and video games, like count me in, love both of those things to death. So I'm going to be moving on to my books now. This is the fourth book I read in the month of July. Now, the problem with this is that I did not rate this book, not because I don't think it deserved a rating, but because I don't really think it made sense to rate this book because of what the content was. And that is Wicker King by Kay Ingram. This one is, it just delves into a lot of like mental health and a lot of aspects of it that I didn't really feel like it made sense to rate. I mean, I know it's fiction and I usually don't mind rating fiction, but I just felt like something with this just didn't feel right with me to actually rate it. So I did not end up rating it, but I did enjoy it. There were aspects of it that I don't know if I felt the same as other people. I feel like the characters in this were not unlikable. It was more like, I don't know if I should have been rooting for them being together because it is a little bit of a male-male relationship in this book. But it seems, I don't know if toxic is the right word, it just didn't feel healthy. And so I was like, I don't know if I should be, you know, wanting this to go forward. 
I don't know. In this story, we're following two characters. We're following August, who is a pyromaniac, I believe it's called, where he likes to set fires. It's kind of what he does to like calm himself down. And then we have Jack, who is steadily experiencing hallucinations throughout the book. And Jack and August have like a friendship that is, is not really healthy. So what I wrote down for this book, kind of as simple as possible without spoiling too much of it, is that we are following kind of a downward spiral of a character who is so heavily reliant on another character that they themselves start to slip into their own issues. It is very much it very much touches upon the toxic reliability that someone has on someone else and you see that within August and Jack's relationship. August is I want to shake August sometimes. He is so giving for Jack and it was so hard to read between the two of them. The relationship they had. I mean it wasn't Jack's fault entirely. He was experiencing a lot of hallucinations and a lot of problems and because he wasn't getting help it really made it hard for the two of them to have a healthy relationship. And this book also touches upon the fact that teenagers aren't usually taken seriously by adults and aren't always looked upon like if someone's having a hard time in school or if someone's acting out usually there's a reason for it but usually adults don't care. They act like hey you're a bad kid you're being bad, that's all it is. You're just being a bad kid. Nothing to do with anything else. And I think that's a huge thing that kind of this book shows and what the acknowledgements talks about. And I really appreciated Kay Ingram for speaking on that because it is very important that we take teenagers seriously. Even though teenagers, no offense if you are one, are so annoying sometimes, but we have to take them seriously because I went through a really hard time in my childhood and no one was there for me and I really wish someone was. So make sure that your teenagers or other teenagers around you are okay because it's a really lonely time in life, okay? It's really hard to be a teenager. So, I mean, I was one at one point in my life. It's been a while, but I was one. Oh, it's only been like 10 years. Yeah, it's only been like 10 years. Oh gosh, I'm getting old. Okay, well now we're gonna be moving on to the books I actually did rate. So the lowest rated book I'm going to be talking about very vaguely because I have a whole video on this is marked by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. This is the first book in the House of Night series. I have it tabbed up. I'm gonna be talking about this actually after this video is over. And uh, I will have this video up of this reading vlog on this book after this video. So the next one I will be uploading will be my reading vlog on this. And this is from, why am I reading this? From my Sims TBR video. This is my lowest rated book of all time. And not only that, but I've read it probably more than most books in my life. I read this three times now which I don't know what that says about me. Like, why am I reading a book I hate? I have the first eight books and there's 12 books in the series. My goodness, help me. I'm gonna be reading all of them at some point. I'll be doing a whole reading vlog series on this series and I'm not looking forward to it, but at the same time I kind of am. I wanna see what happens. I wanna see if the books get better, if that's possible. I mean, it can't get worse. I think I jinxed it actually. Um, this is like a vampire. It's very much a Vampire Academy crave vampires in an academy setting. It's very like typical of what we see multiple times already. It's not new. It's, it's been done many times before. I don't really think I have anything else to say about this because I will have a whole video on it. So yeah, one star. It hasn't changed. It's still horrible. And um, yeah, I'll have a video up soon about how I felt about this and it's not good. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be a spoiler filled vlog. So there's that to look forward to if you really want to see me not like a book and hate it. There you go. The sixth book on this list is going to be a three and a half stars. I quite liked it at some parts, but not in others. That is Archangel's Kiss by Nalini Singh. Uh, this is the second book in the Guild Hunter series and like I said I gave it 3.5. I enjoyed the beginning more than I did the middle to end. It was okay. I don't know. I haven't really been hooked in the series yet but there are a lot of aspects I really do enjoy about the series. So this is following a series where like there's angels and then there's the higher ups who are the archangels and then there's a vampire that kind of work within the group of archangels. So Raphael is the archangel in this book and he has these guys working for him who are vampires. So they kind of have like this, you know, they like make packs together and they do things together. And if you are a bad vampire, the archangels will come after you because they have like this pact going on that if you break that and you become like, you know, if you're doing horrible things, that looks bad on the archangels. So it's very weird, but kind of a cool concept. I really do like it. A lot of characters in this book series I'm really enjoying. Iliam is my favorite. He has like blue wings. All the angels have different colored wings. They could be like any color you want. It's actually really cool. This is following the events of the first book and this is following the same characters, Elena and Raphael. They go to Beijing in this book to meet up with, oh my gosh, what's her name? I forgot her first name, but I think her last name is Li Zhuan. And she, uh, they end up meeting with her and she's like a necromantic vampire and it's pretty uh it's, it has its moments it has its moments okay it, it, this has smut in it it has romance in it they will be following different couples throughout the series it's kind of like black dagger brotherhood where they follow different couples but they also 
focus a few books on only Elena and Raphael. So I kind of like the concept of focusing on, you know, a certain couple every so often and then going to other couples. But she has another series that only focuses on like different couples each book. So I, I, I think I might try her other series if I ever get to the end of this one. She's still writing and there's like 17 books. <laughs> So I have no idea. I had a whole video where I filmed that this reminded me way too much of Sergio Mass's books. But then I saw a video of Sergio Mass and Nalini Singh like talking and I was like, I, I didn't want to put up a video saying that Sergio Mass ripped off Nalini Singh if they like, if they spoke together. Like I didn't want to do that. It just felt kind of wrong of me to do that. But there are a whole lot of similarities between Sergio Mass's books and Nalini Singh's books I've noticed so far. I'm not saying she, she ripped her off, but uh, honestly, I thought that there were some some ideas were just so similar that it was kind of like weird. So if you like Akatar, this series I would say maybe give it a shot. It's not as fantasy based; it's more urban fantasy, and I don't think I enjoy it as much as Akatar. But there are a lot of similarities between like winged men and very protective alpha men, and like the whole like you're mine kind of thing. Very prevalent in the series. The guy in this is a little bit problematic only because he's very very possessive, and I don't know, but I don't mind. I don't mind. It's not reality. I have a boyfriend that would never do any of these things, so I'm not into toxic relationships in real life, okay? I'm not. <laughs> but sometimes in a book, the fantasy world is nice. It's fun. Fiction is fun, right? It's fun. I'm going to keep going. The next book is going to be also Raphael and Elena, but I think the book after that is finally going to be following a different couple. I also really like the series because I think, I think there's like a male-male relationship eventually, and I've already felt a little bit of that like I don't know. It's oh, I'm just so excited to continue the series because there's so many characters I'm very interested in and I really want to know more of. So kind of pushes me forward so that I can learn more about these other characters. Okay, so the next book I'm not going to talk too much about because I already mentioned this again way too many times. This is the third book in the Make Game series and this is Possession by Kay Lorraine and Meg Ann. I'm going to be putting Maggie's channel below as well as the readathon that's happening right now or the read along I should say that's happening right now where we are reading the Make Game series. I think we're getting to the last book pretty much around the time I filmed this video and put it up on the internet. This, I think the temptation will already have been started, if not soon starting. This is the third book. I, I can't really say much about it, obviously spoilers, but every single book kind of focuses kind of primarily on a different guy. This one is Alec. He's my least favorite. He's like a golden retriever and that's sweet, but like, give me the tortured soul. I'm sorry. That's just how I am. The dark haired tortured soul guy. It's cliche, but that's what I like. I'm sorry, I can't help it. But yeah, I gave this one a four stars. I think it's my least favorite so far of the series, but I think the last book will make up for that and probably be, if not my favorite, then close to my favorite. Okay, so the next one is an arc that I received from NetGalley. This is a 4.25 stars, and this is Thornhedge by T. Kingfisher. This is like a fairy tale fantasy type reimagining, I guess you can say. Okay, if I'm looking down, it's because I wrote down notes this time because I wanted to make sure I got this right. So the main character is Totling. She came from the human world, but was transferred into the fae world where she's raised by a different type of family and she's capable of changing herself into other forms. Uh, I said that she was a toad in my TBR video. She's not actually a toad. Her name is just Toadling. I just assumed she was an actual toad, which wasn't. She was not a toad, okay? Toadling is given a job to protect a tower and pretty much not allow anyone to go in it or around it. One day a knight shows up and is curious about the area and the tower and he tries his best to get to it himself, but Toadling obviously has to stop him. and. Things ensue from there I can't talk too much about. The last thing I will talk about for this book is I actually wrote down in my notes that there felt like a underlying message within this. Not saying that that's what T. Kingfisher wanted, but it felt like from me there was a message that I kind of got from this book uh, because I myself feel similar to Toe in some regard. Overarching message of this book is loneliness, self-doubt, putting too much pressure on oneself as well as responsibility, doing all that based off of a mistake someone has made. So making a mistake and feeling like you are pushing yourself to overcompensate for that and I think that totally does that and I think sometimes I do that in my own life where you feel like you are responsible for something so you start to overcompensate and kind of do more than you really need to it's not like you have to do all this stuff but you feel like you do and you feel responsible you put too much pressure on yourself all that stuff also loneliness is a huge thing in this book it's just a lot of these little tiny things touch upon that I really liked seeing in this book and I really had a good time with it that's why I gave it 4.25 I really liked it and yeah I've never read from Tea Kingfisher before but I think I might now because I'm kind of interested more in their work and the last book on this list, my ninth book, is going to be one I gave a five stars to. Five stars. If you've been on my channel long enough, you might hardly hear me say that because I don't. I think I gave it like a one maybe, 
two maybe books five stars this entire year i think the first one was like berserk i'm not even sure did i i don't know if i've even given i don't even know if i've given a five star yet this year like a full five stars that book is going to be last argument of tings by joe mccrombie i read this for the ketchup book club done by becca and I love this so much. And supposedly not a lot of people did in the readathon, but I absolutely loved this book. It was incredible. I love the characters so much. I think the characters, I'm just so attached to these characters. It's just so hard for me to not like this book anymore. I mean, it wasn't perfect. It was not perfect by any means. I don't really care for Baez's arc. He's like the magi of the group, the magic wielder. Didn't love him. I just don't really find an interest in his side of the story, but otherwise I like everyone else. Even Giselle, I don't like him at all. But I found his chapters to be very interesting because I liked being in his head because he's so dumb and I just kind of enjoyed it. My favorite characters in this book, I feel like I like all of different characters and different reasons. West is another character I really like, even though obviously something happens in the first book that I don't love, but I do like West as a character. I love Logan, I love Glockta, I love them all so much. And it, they're, they're not only morally gray because of things that they do, it's just like you can't even really like them that much because they're not good people, but they're also people that do good things or they have good intent all of them do all of them have good intent but do bad things and i really like that about this book and these characters so much and i just can't wait to keep going in this series and this like world and i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next because like i'm really enjoying it i'm really liking it if you can't tell i am tabbing it blue tabs for me are quotes i enjoy and then green are things i haven't updated on my google document yet oops uh hopefully no one's actually waiting for me to do that because i haven't done it yet but uh, i have a whole google document of all the characters their names if they died how they did and uh, anything like that i write in the google document i'll put it down below again because i keep forgetting to do that but yeah uh i will update it hopefully soon and get to that so yeah five stars i really did like it it took me like two months to read it not because i didn't enjoy it but because like it's just a heavy character driven story that it just took me a while to get through but i loved it immensely so i'm really looking forward to reading more dry mercrami in the future and yeah uh five stars okay so that is it for my july wrap up i read all those nine books i will obviously put an overview right here of what i read i did not get to gathering of shadows where is it i think it's right over here I did not get to a conjuring of light so i didn't do my pull pick which is unfortunate um i just didn't want to push myself july and june have been like the hardest months in the past like few years it's horrible my depression has been bad so i've been trying to read but not push myself to read so i did not get to read this book but i'm hoping i can finish this book in this trilogy before the end of the year i have to get to it so i'm hoping i can finish this trilogy by the end of the year that's my goal so i hope i can get to this soon again not in august because i already done my august tbr video but hopefully maybe within the next few months i mean there's only a few months left of the year so i have to Yikes. Okay, so I'm gonna be wrapping up this video. I want to thank you all so much for being here, especially when I don't really have anyone else around me. I really appreciate all the community and all the people here, and you're just amazing. Thank you so much. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great reading month, and I hope to see you all soon. Goodbye, everyone.